Welcome to today's Willpower Moment. I'm Dr. James Machino. Our topic today is your health goals have to be your health goals. You know, in the book No Name in the Street, James Baldwin writes, people pay for what they do and still more for what they allow themselves to become. And they pay for it simply by the lives they lead. Now, this is very true with respect to the level of health we experience and the rate at which we age. Now, there are some exceptions. But if you truly want to be vibrant and healthy for as long as possible, you have to set some health goals for yourself along with a personalized strategy to achieve it. So what's really important though is that the health goals and strategies are chosen by you, not by other people. So why is this? Well, the clearer you are about what you value and what action you expect of yourself, not what other people value or what other people expect of you, the more likely you are to stick to the intention. So what I'm saying is that you have to be aware of what are called red herring goals. These are goals we set because they reflect other people's values, not our own. So here's some examples. You know, we, a person declares, I'm going to start cooking most of my meals at home because, you know, your friends told you that restaurant, all restaurant food is unhealthy, which is not necessarily true. But you don't really like cooking, and the chances that you actually are going to stick to cooking most of your meals at home is actually slim to none. Or you say, I'm going to quit smoking but you're not really ready to do it. We're just cutting down slowly might be more suited to what you can accept personally. Or the person says, I'm going to quit drinking, but you're really not ready to abstain in every moment and in every situation. In which case, you're better off to set a limit to the number of drinks you have on a weekly basis and track it. The person says, I'm switching from coffee to green tea, but to you, green tea, green tea tastes like sewer water, you know, you, and you're just not going to stick to it. Or the person says, I'm going to be gluten-free from now on because it's a popular thing to do today, but you, don't, you haven't really had a blood test to see if you have celiac disease and you don't have any symptoms of gluten intolerance. However, your friends or family convince you that it's the right thing for you to be doing. Now, becoming gluten-free isn't easy and it can make you feel like being on a health kick is just too difficult, in which case eventually you give up and you start eating all kinds of disease-promoting foods that go way beyond simple gluten consumption. Or you say, I'm giving up all carbohydrate foods, all carbs, I'm swearing off bread, pasta, rice, potatoes for the rest of my life. You know, it, it's not necessary to do that. And trying to do it is almost impossible. Or the person says, I'm going to start meditating. You know, meditation isn't for everybody. There are other ways to reduce stress and find inner peace. You know, you have to find methods that best suit who you are. Now, for many people, meditation is a huge blessing that leads to better physical and mental health. But it's not for everyone. You know, you have to know who you are. So you might say, I'm going to try this to see if it works for me, and if it does, then great, and if not, then no sense in doing it just because other people find it to be so magical and edifying. See, with red herring goals, we fool ourselves about our actual intentions. We declare we're going to do something, but deep down we know it's just not really who we are, or that we're not really ready to make such a big commitment, especially if a smaller commitment would be more realistic, believable, and attainable. So my best recommendation for you is to click onto the daily wellness checklist which you'll find on the main dashboard and create your own nutrition and lifestyle strategy that you plan to adhere to that is consistent with who you are and what you're willing to do, not what other people want you to do. Start with that and you can always add new wellness strategies as your journey unfolds. The key is to access the daily wellness checklist each day and check off the things that you accomplished as a means to monitor your progress and keep yourself accountable to the things you promised yourself you would do. That's really how it gets done. So set the goals that you feel you can achieve, create them as a list in your daily wellness checklist and simply check them off as you accomplish them day after day. It's actually very fun and liberating. Okay, good luck with your wellness goals. Thanks for watching.